Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Well, let's continue talking about a radio. <coughs> um, the last lecture was about how we receive radio signal. Um, today I would like to talk about how we transmit it so somebody can receive. This lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. The website uh, contains the prerequisite course, Mass for Teens. Mass is a mandatory piece of knowledge which you have to really study before going into physics relatively seriously. Um, now the video recording is on YouTube and that's where you probably might find this lecture, but I do suggest you to go to unizor.com website because it contains basically the whole course. There is a menu divided into, you know, certain parts, topics, lectures, etc. They're all logically connected to each other and I'm referencing from one to another. And um, the site is completely free, there are no advertisements, no uh, strings attached. You, you don't even have to uh, sign in if you don't want to. Just if you want to take Partici if you if, we, if you would like to participate in the educational process which involves like exams or maybe your teacher or parent will supervise you etc then you might need go into a signing in etc etc but nevertheless all is free no ads okay <coughs> so let's talk about transmission um, the first thing let me remind you how we received information. Now, there are many different ways, basically, many different designs, and my idea is just to introduce you uh, the principles which are probably lying in the foundation of any design. So you just equate, get, uh, you're just getting acquainted with with idea rather than with a concrete. Uh, uh, design. The real design is much more complex, but the idea is very important. And unless you are a professional, you probably don't need all these small details about implementation of this idea. But that's how it started, and whenever it started, that's the very big jump forward. Then um, the idea is gradually developing into better quality, etc. But the big jump is what I will just draw you right now. So here is something which is um, called LC circuit, if you remember. It contains capacitor and inductor. And we have actually talked about if I will have a switch here. So this is the battery, and this is a switch which I can connect either, <coughs> either to position A, and in the position A my capacitor can be charged from the battery. So this is plus, this is minus, so electrons will c accumulate here, and there will be a deficiency of electrons here, and then as soon as we switch from A to B, we will observe oscillations. Why? Because uh, electrons will start moving from um, excess of electrons to deficiency of electrons, from minus to plus, and the um, inductor will um, assure that whenever these electrons will completely exhaust their excess, the mag magnetic energy accumulated in the inductor will support the movement and electrons will go even further making deficiency on this side and excess of electrons on that side. So that's all related to the Faraday's law of induction. So whenever my uh, current diminishing, my magnetic flux uh, is changing uh, it, it accumulates um, certain energy and uh, electromotive force 
uh, is developed by the Faraday's law and that electromotive force supports um, the um, electricity, the electric current to continue um, uh, moving from this to this. Um, and uh, that would create excess of electrons on this side up until a certain limit and then back. So it will oscillate all the time. Now, what's interesting is this is just a, an L, a LC circuit. Now, let me, let's forget about this for a while and attach antenna to this. Now, so this is antenna and I am attaching this antenna this is grounding and I am attaching this antenna to a circuit using um, uh, some kind of uh, transformer or something. Uh, you can have the same core and two different wiring on the same core. There are many different ways to transform one um, magnetic field to another. Again, that's induction. So if there is a, if there is a common core between these two wires, um, uh, the magnetic field will be created and uh, it will be a variable magnetic field because it's oscillating, right? And um, since it's a variable magnetic field, uh, it will create the variable magnetic flux actually. It will create um, the similar uh, thing here. So from one uh, inductor, um, the oscillations will always go to another. So if this is an antenna, and antenna is again a piece of wire basically where um, uh, electric current uh, occurs if there is a, um, an oscillation of electromagnetic field around it. So if somebody transmits this onto this antenna, that's in the antenna we will have variable um, uh, current it will create variable magnetic flux here and information and uh, sorry and and um, uh, this magnetic flux will cause the induction inducting uh, current in this particular um, inductor and the oscillation will be here but the problem is that it just if this is as this antenna accepts many different uh, transmitting signals with different frequencies and all of them are going into this particular circuit but if you remember the circuit has its own um, uh, frequency of oscillation uh, which has uh, omega is equal to 1 over square root of L times C and only this particular uh, frequency will resonate everything else will be significantly smaller. So the resonate, the, the, the resonate frequency will be actually the major um, oscillations which are coming here. So that's how we accept signals. But now, still so the question is how we transmit to this antenna. But let's look at this um, from a different perspective, from a reverse pr perspective. What if you already have oscillations here? and relatively strong oscillations with this particular frequency. Well, it will cause the oscillation of electromagnetic uh, field and the uh, electric current here, which will again be variable. So it will actually create an electromagnetic field around it. And if this is significantly powerful um, device, then the electromagnetic field will actually spread all around it. So transmission in theory can be achieved using a very similar device as a receiver. So if receiver accepts everything and then uh, the only one particular frequency gets resonated and we can use this to extract to receive that particular frequency. On the transmitting side if you already have a specific frequency it will go to antenna, antenna will create the electromagnetic uh, waves of that same frequency and that's, if it's powerful enough, it will spread all over and that's how this particular frequency will go out. Now, some other installation might have another frequency, 
So that's how different radio stations are transmitting their own signals on their own frequencies. Now, I did not talk yet about how to uh, send some kind of a signals, like a speech for instance, or, or image on the TV, etc. I'm talking only about main frequency. We will use this main frequency using certain modulators. We can transmit information, but that would be a subject of a different lecture. Right now we're talking about how to transmit certain electromagnetic waves of certain frequency. So if we transmit certain frequency, then somebody else can receive that particular frequency by, if this is a receiver, this is usually a variable capacitor, which can be tuned to a specific frequency. If it's a transmitter, then this is a fixed thing, and it's fixed on certain... I mean, it also can be uh, variable, so it will be able to transmit on different frequencies, but it will transmit the frequency which is exactly equal to this, in this particular case. So, this is a general idea of transmitting information. Now, what's the problem? It will obviously not work like that. It's too simple, right? Okay, so we have one major problem. Um, the uh, oscillations do not occur by themselves. I mean, even if we will, con uh, if we will attach some kind of a, a battery to this and uh, charge our uh, capacitor, it will start oscillating, but it will finish very soon because any circuit has certain resistance and whenever you have a resistance involved, that changes everything. Because if you remember, the um, oscillations, in case we have a resistor, are damped. And damped uh, oscillations will uh, exponentially go down in amplitude. And that will be it. So we have to somehow maintain oscillations which are sustainable. So we have to somehow connect the uh, source of energy to this, not just on a one-time basis and then let it go, but we have to constantly push it. Now, there is an obvious analogy. Um, the swing, for instance, on the children's playground, if you just push it once, well, it will start um, uh, 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 oscillating back and forth, and it will be uh, damped oscillations because of the uh, friction, fri friction. So the oscillations will gradually go down exponentially, by the way. Okay, um, so we really have to do something which parents on the children's playground do on a swing, which means they push on every uh, swing. So just a little bit, but we need a little push every time, and that's how we maintain um, uh, stable as oscillations. So we have to somehow connect the source of energy, the battery here, but not always. It should always help, which means that if this plate is um, negative, we can add additional negative uh, charge to this. But if it's positive and we will add negative, that would be uh, the, the opposite effect. We will just slow down uh, the, the oscillation. Not slow down, but we'll uh, reduce the amplitude. <coughs> so how can we do it in such a way that something like this switch would be uh, on only in, in case, for instance, if this is, again, something like positive, negative, so if this is positive, now we have to really open the switch into this direction when this is positive, and this positive will add a little bit more positive, and this negative will add a little bit more negative. And then as soon as this is done, as soon as one uh, a particular period of oscillation is finished, we have to flip the switch into this to let it continue oscillating. I mean, it's kind of complex uh, to, to, to arrange, obviously. And, the, but, but that's actually the whole thing. That's exactly what we have to do. So the question is, how can we make such a circuit which would be sustainable, which will continue oscillating using some kind of a source of energy 
um, to compensate for for damping effect of the resistance. Okay, so let's not talk about antenna. We know what to do with antenna. What we have to do is we have to somehow device device the um, circuit which would be um, oscillating using certain source of energy, um, but it will be actually synchronized, the source of energy will be synchronized with oscillations. So how can we do that? All right. Now, I will suggest some very, very basic idea, and probably it's similar to what the first um, developers, uh, inventors, of these type of schemas, these type of uh, circuits, uh, we're actually going through. Um, again, le le let me re-emphasize that what's important is the initial idea. Then it can be developed into a better one. But the initial idea, uh, somebody just came up with this, or similar, I mean there are many similar ideas actually, which achieve exactly the same thing. So I will just explain one of those ideas and then, just basically, let's just think about this as the beginning of a very, very long um, uh, way of developing and perfecting uh, this or similar ideas. Okay, how can we do it? Um, now, first of all, the switch. Now, we cannot obviously have a mechanical switch here. We have to have some kind of a switch, which is electronic which can be made um, in, in sync, which can be synchronized with oscillations. So we will open it whenever, you know, plus is here and minus is there, and we will close it otherwise, something like this. Now, um, how can we do it? Well, what, what, what is a switch in electronics? Well, in electronics we have a very simple device, which we were discussing before, which can be used as a switch. Now, long time ago, it used to be called triodes, um, and uh, uh, later on, the transistors were developed, and uh, using semiconductors, the functionality w w was achieved exactly the same. Um, I will explain it on, on triodes, because in, in the triodes, you just basically see better what exactly is happening. But then, obviously, it was changed to transistors, it was lower voltage probably, different other things, but in any case, um, uh, contemporary switches are obviously on transistors, but it, with triodes, it's, uh, uh, with lamp, lamps, it, it, it's easier to, to explain. Okay, so triodes. So triodes has um, cathode, which is kind of emitter, It's hot, and when it's hot, it emits electrons. It's like an electron clouds above it. And again, all this was explained uh, in a separate uh, chapter of this course, which is devoted to electromagnetism. And there is an anode. Now, there is a grid in between. Now, this, if it's heated, it emits electrons. Well, usually there is a small heater here with a small source of energy. So let's just not about, let's not talk about this. Whatever it is, it's hot. Now, whenever it's hot, it emits electrons there surrounding this cathode uh, like a cloud. Now, if this grid this uh, this grid is positive, then electrons will go this way through the grid and reach anode. So there will be some kind of a current if we will close the circuit. Okay. If this grid is negative, it will repulse electrons, and there will be no uh, current. So basically, depending on this charge of this uh, uh, grid, we can open and close the circuit. 
Okay, great. So let's make this circuit with some kind of a source of energy. And close it here. Okay, now in this particular case, now all we have to do is to change plus to minus or minus to plus in sync with these oscillations. How can we do this? Well, here is the way how I can do it. I'll, I'll have another inductor here connected one end here and another end to the grid. So, oscillations are here, which means the uh, electric current goes this or this. And electrons are actually going in the one or another direction. So, in, uh, an analogous um, oscillations will be in this particular inductor. It will, this um, uh, changing electric current, which is pulsating from plus to minus, um, it will uh, induce electric current here and electrons either go this way or that way. So whenever electrons are going this way this would be negative and that will repulse electrons from the heated cathode and it will not reach this. As soon as it's positive electrons will go here. So basically this is exactly what we need. In sync with oscillations of this oscillations in this particular inductor will cause opening or closing this circuit and as soon as it's open it will go here so it will charge what we have to do I mean not we, we will not do it but what really designers do they have to really adjust parameters all these capacitors uh, inductors L1 and L2 um, the voltage here and parameters of the, of, the, of the triode or transistor in a later time they have to be ingested properly in such a way that we really are uh, feeding our uh, oscillations in sync so again analogous with uh, swings on the children's playground you really have to push whenever the swing goes this way and you push it this way. If you will do it whenever the swing goes this way and you push it this way, obviously the amplitude will diminish immediately. So there are certain calculations which, which, which people who design these types of um, circuits, they had to go through and experiments. The problem is it's really complicated. Because if you will obviously add a resistor here, which basically is the source of the necessity for this, um, you, you really have a very complex um, um, forces which are actually acting on the current. Because on one, ha on one hand you have the oscillations within this uh, circuit by itself. Then you have oscillations in this circuit where the source of um, uh, energy is coming through. You see, before, whenever we were explaining the LC uh, circuit, I mechanically changed the switch. So it's either this or that. Either I, I fed the uh, capacitor or capacitor and inductor start oscillating. Now everything seems to be exactly in the same circuit. So all the different parameters and a lot of experiments actually were made before people came up with certain numerical characteristics necessary for all these components to be in sync in such a way that the whole thing is really working. It's really uh, maintaining the oscillations of certain frequency. By the way, the frequency will change because of the, of the resistor uh, and, and all other devices. Not, not significantly, but slightly changed. So all these have to be really brought into, in, into perspective and in, into calculations 
which is not easy. It's completely beyond the scope of this particular course. Um, it's basically for professionals whenever they're going into real things about this. My idea was just to introduce you to something which can actually be transformed into some kind of a device with proper calculations, experiments, etc. And there are other um, ways of uh, uh, feeding our oscillations with energy. Now we are feeding through inductor. There are certain other ways to feed it through a capacitor or a second capacitor. I mean, if you will take a look on uh, on internet, for instance, uh, how the transmitter is basically created, you will see many different um, uh, circuits. This is probably one of the simplest ones, much more complex with not one but other uh, capacitors, other uh, inductors. <coughs> Sorry. Um, uh, were introduced into this um, uh, circuit to do certain things, to filter something, to stabilize something, to, to, to improve certain characteristics. And because it's so complex, you can see now that there are many different manufacturers and many different um, radio devices, and they all have different qualities. We have more expensive uh, devices which are capable of doing significantly better job, like Hi-Fi, for instance. Um, and there are some older, maybe, circuits which are not capable of doing something like this. So it's all very much involved. And again, my purpose was to introduce you to idea that we need some kind of a circuit which maintains uh, certain oscillations with certain uh, frequency. And if these oscillations are strong enough, then we can connect an antenna, which probably is another inductor, somewhere here. Which is connected to antenna. And, uh, and the strong one, actually, in this particular case, if we are talking about transmitting, we need a very strong signal. So the whole thing is very much involved. And again, this is just how it started, if you wish. How the first thoughts about radio transmission came to certain people who really invented the radio. Okay, uh, basically that's how we can maintain certain oscillations of certain frequency and transmit it. Now the question is how to use this to, to transmit some signal. Um, so one thing is to just transmit uh, free oscillations of a certain frequency, but it doesn't carry any information. So how can we put information into these oscillations? So we have learned how we can transmit the oscillations. Now we can uh, learn how to use these oscillations of the electromagnetic field to, uh, to, to transmit certain information and receive it. So we have to now not only be able to uh, transmit the main, as they're saying, carrying frequency, but use this carrying frequency and modulate it in some way to transmit some useful signal. And that would be the next lecture. Thank you very much, and good luck.